Well, racial tensions in the United States behind widespread protests in various countries. Here at home, discussion center on racial injustices and inequality and the impact it's had on the country. Crystal Darling has the story. We like to believe we live in an age of race blindness or, or where racism has been vanquished. But in, in fact, what we have is a society that is profoundly structured around inequalities. Following a storm of racial debates all over social media, many have been standing in support of global black empowerment. Associate Professor of History at the University of the Bahamas, Dr. Christopher Curry, recently published an article online discussing the history of race in the Bahamas entitled Race, Power and Privilege. In the piece, Curry lays out issues in the immediate post-emancipation period, saying that labor exploitation took place through many systems, including the truck and labor tenancy. But the merchant class actually manipulated the system, the labor systems, to their advantage where they got labor out of people without having to pay them wages. So that's where those three systems I just mentioned uh, function. But beyond that, um, the, the formerly enslaved, the black masses, didn't have access to land. They couldn't afford land in the first instance because they didn't have any money. And secondly, even if they could have afforded land, they didn't really have access to it because a lot of the land was crown land or um, there was clear title and, and clear title meant legal documents that, that the white merchant class had that gave them an advantage over the formerly enslaved black masses. Curry says that in the 1920s, the societal structure in the country still posed a number of challenges. While development was made on Bay Street, the widening of streets and the modernizing of the streets, the paving of the streets, uh, electrification was extended along Bay Street and a little further along the coast. Over the hill remained completely marginalized. We had abysmal um, social services. You had no access really to health still. Education was completely ignored. I mean, we're talking about a society in which high school education was not afforded to blacks until really in the 1950s. The University of the Bahamas professor also quoted political activist Marcus Garvey as he made suggestions on how black communities can overcome deeply rooted and long-standing racial injustices. It's the belief that they should be able to take care of themselves. They shouldn't have to rely on the handouts of the white man, right? So, you know, you build your own economies, you build your own laundry mats, you build your own banks, you build your own shipping lines in, in his case. Uh, you build your own businesses, small and large. In, in the case of the Bahamas, we need to move towards empowering our, our people. You know that our country's greatest asset is still its, its people power, human resources. And we have great minds and intellectuals in this country that can empower us to take on um, the tourism industry, to develop um, boutique resorts owned and operated on a small scale by Bahamians. But beyond that, you know, we have to do some serious legislative and constitutional reform. Crystal Darling, ZNS Network News.